Lord, I pray that the meditation of our hearts, thoughts in our minds, Lord, would they be acceptable to you at this time? Would you speak to us? May we be encouraged and built up. May we know you to be closer than a brother as we share. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I just wondered before we began whether anybody has any news about this. You know, can we take showers yet? Or is it just hands? Um, I'm not sure. Sorry about that. That's a bit weak, isn't it? Just a quiz. What do Winnie the Pooh and John the Baptist have in common? Any idea? Their middle names. It's the. Oh, ha, ha. I do apologize, folks. I do apologize. We'll be talking about the birth of John the Baptist. And forgive me, all those ladies who have given birth. This, I know, is um, very chauvinistic, but it's just something to laugh about. But just to pause here a moment, you know, when we're looking at this account of the birth of John the Baptist, we need to remember that when the angel told Zechariah, actually, let's call them Zach and Liz, it makes for easier speech. When angel Gabriel, let's call Gabriel Gab, shall we? When Gab told Zach, he said to him, your wife, Liz, will bear a son, not just a child. It was a very specific promise. And so here we have the birth of that son, Gabriel's word coming to fruition. And that, I think, is an indication that the word of God is reliable. It's not something to be doubted. And this story is one of faith, believing that what God says will come to pass. And also in the birth of John the Baptist, we see how the miraculous happens, doesn't it? Where both Zach and Liz are well past the age of having children. But here God intervenes miraculously and says, no, you will be able to bear a son. In that process, God steps back and allows the natural to take over. So here we have Liz carrying that baby for nine months. But here we have God, the miraculous, but also using the natural. It's never doubt that God wants to use us. God is with us, alongside us. That's the whole message of Christmas. Emmanuel, alongside us. The miraculous meeting the natural. And also, I think, when we think about the birth of John the Baptist, let's never forget that John had a destiny, a purpose. And each one of us, too, have a destiny, a purpose. Not something which we finally arrive at, but it's the ongoing way we live our lives, which impact and imprint on others around us. We have a destiny. Our children have a destiny. Our grandchildren have a destiny. Although we might not see it, and it takes sometimes a lot of faith and patience, we know that God blesses each life that he has a purpose and a plan for each one of us. And so John had a special purpose, the forerunner of Jesus. But we too have that responsibility, that calling, that opportunity to share the wonderful news of Christ, especially now at Christmas. And our children, let's remember to keep them at the forefront of our prayers and our grandchildren and those in our wider family, because God has a purpose for us all. If we think about the birth of John the Baptist, John the Baptist was part of the salvation story. John was to herald the salvation story. And it's a story of mercy, God showing us mercy, of God showing Liz and Zach mercy. And we must never, I think, move too fast past that realization at Christmas that this is all down to God's mercy. He knows our situations. He knew Elizabeth and Zach's situation. He knows our situation. There are things that we are longing for, waiting for. Let's trust God. And also we recognize that when Zach and Liz had their child, when John was born, there was incredible joy, wasn't there? Joy amongst the neighbors, joy amongst the relatives. And it just reminds me and brings to mind that notion of our verse that we're currently focusing on for the time being. And that is that we are the body of Christ. Each one of us placed in that body. And when you see neighbors and relatives rejoicing together, it reminds us of that encouragement to rejoice with those who are glad and mourn with those who are mourn, but recognize that we are part of the wider body of Christ. And here we have that enacted before us in this birth of John the Baptist, the body of Christ, families and relatives all rejoicing in this miraculous birth. 
And so encouragement for us is to perhaps think about recognizing God more and more in our everyday. We're trying to emphasize the concept that faith is about everyday life. It's not something that happens in church on Sundays alone. It's much broader than that. And so when one comes to herald the salvation, which is for us all, from God's standpoint of pure mercy, we're invited to recognize that God is not only at that one point bringing salvation, but he's continually offering us salvation, redemption, and that to our neighbors and our friends. And so there's an everyday occurrence happening where we are called into sharing this life, this mercy, and the salvation of God. So salvation for all, that was John the Baptist's message, and it's our message, God coming to redeem every one of us. So let's rejoice in that. The covenant, the covenant is when on the eighth day they came to circumcise John. In our language, we kind of have lost sight of that word covenant. It's more than promise, it's more than agreement. A covenant is something which is absolutely binding. Just like Isaac was the promise child or the child of promise to Abraham. So John is a child of promise to Liz and Zach. So this child John is a child of promise that needs next a covenant. Remind us of the covenant that God made with us. Say that I will be your God. And in the salvation history, we know that our God can be one with us, Emmanuel. And in this covenant, um, or this circumcision process, this ceremony, it was the act of giving over again this child back to God, of saying, Lord, you give and you take away. And I've often thought about our emphasis when we have children born to us in today's society. We rejoice enormously in the birth, but we don't rejoice as much often in the baptism of the child, which is our equivalent of that enacting that covenant. And I'm wondering why that is so, because actually baptism, that acknowledging that this child belongs to God, is hugely important in our covenant history. But in this covenant that God makes with us and that John came to enact and reenact and tell us about, it does have an opt-in and an opt-out clause. And we are required to opt-in. If we don't opt-in, then we are opting out. Nobody forces us into a covenant relationship with God. God offers himself to be our God and for us to be his people. And so just to recognize that God, when he covenants with us, he means it. And so just like Deirdre was saying, he is always there. He is always there to hear our prayers. He is always with us. He is a covenant keeping God. Of course, obedience. Zach and Mary had both got to the point where they realized obedience was really crucial. They knew that they needed to trust the angel. The angel had said to them, you must name this child John. And they went against all custom. They went against neighbors, friends, relatives. They said, this is what God is calling us to do, to name this child John. It was breaking the norm. It was breaking the mold. And it took courage. But it also takes practice, doesn't it, for us in our Christian walk to be obedient to the Lord. Sometimes we get it right and sometimes we get it wrong. And I'm just thinking of someone like Rosemary. Sorry, Rosemary, if I use you an example like this. But the way Rosemary has this ability to be obedient to the Lord, when the Lord places somebody on her mind, she responds immediately. She makes the phone call. She gets in her car. She might go and visit them. She just responds. She's just practiced at that obedience of just doing what she feels God's calling her to do. And that's called everyday faith. It's acting out the everyday promptings that God gives us. And just like in this one situation, Zach and Liz had to remember not to bow to cultural pressure or norms or to the expectations of family or friends. So sometimes we are called just to honor God and do what God's calling us to do. And in a sense, we see that Israel Zach had to wait nine months in his state of being dumb before he could actually follow through with that obedience and name his son John. And there are times too when we might find ourselves in that place of waiting, just not being sure. And um, we're trying to be obedient to God, and so we are waiting. We don't have the green light yet. We're not sure what the next step might be. 
you know what, it's okay to wait. It's okay to be patient as long as our heart's desire is to be obedient to what God is calling us to do and to say. Worship. The moment Zach had shown his obedience and had obeyed the angel that commanded him to call his son John, the moment he had said, yes, his name is John, his lips were opened and he starts to praise God. It's the first thing that comes out of his mouth. He doesn't focus on anything else except honoring God. And I thought to myself, you know, faith inspires our worship. The fear of God inspires our worship. When we are obedient to God, we respond with worship. Something happens. We begin to naturally focus on God. And I think that might be a healthy thing to do at the end of every day is to think back on the day and think, where have I seen God? The miraculous meeting the natural. Where have I seen God at work? Or where have I been able to tentatively do something which I felt God calling me to? And let's begin to worship God for those opportunities to be a part of the salvation plan. Because not only was this John's story, or Zach's story, or Liz's story, but it's our story too. The story of living and telling our faith. And that's why I'm really grateful to Deirdre for being willing to share your story today, because it's all part and parcel of us learning to share our faith. What does Jesus mean to us today? So to summarize, firstly, salvation. John was there to announce salvation. He had a role to play. That was his part of the story. We are part of that same story. Let's not neglect to share our salvation story. How did we come to faith? because it encourages other people to know how we see the Lord and how we are growing closer to the Lord. Secondly, covenant. Recognizing that God makes a covenant with us, but he wants us to opt in. He doesn't force us to do it. He says, I would like you to be my child, to relinquish control, accept this covenant, but we need to opt in. If we don't, we're actually opting out. Thirdly, obedience. Zach and Liz learned obedience. We too are learning obedience. Sometimes we get it right, sometimes we don't. It's okay in our everyday faith to try and seek to be obedient to God in whatever he might be calling us to do. And finally, as we walk with the Lord, let's be as spontaneous as what Zach and Liz were. And let's respond with worship. The moment we see anything that reminds us of God or stirs our heart, let's worship God. Let's be those people who are generous with our worship. Amen.